Welcome to Well Springs of Faith. My name is Father Jurgen Leas. I'm a Roman Catholic priest. I'm a resident here in Melrose, where we're filming this uh, program, and also a uh, senior priest on the staff of St. Patrick's Catholic Church in Stoneham, the neighboring community. Our program, Well Springs of Faith, which has now been on the air for 30 years almost, uh, is a program about religious faith, a person's journey in faith, their coming to faith in God and the fruit of that faith in their lives and in the life of uh, the world. Uh, we welcome back today Dr. Gilbert Lavoy. Um, he had sort of uh, two parts of his life that I thought would be of interest uh, for interviewing. Or first is his life as a medical doctor with a particular interest in journeying the world to deal with public health crises. He was part of a team who uh, helped conquer smallpox, uh, one of the great medical triumphs of the human race, uh, and also has worked on AIDS and other uh, HIV and other uh, medical scourges as well that we've had to deal with. But he also has had another side of his life, uh, which has to do with the fascinating scholarly work on what is called the Shroud of Turin, a relic in the Catholic Church that purports to be the burial cloth of Jesus. Uh, so I'm not going to say any more than that, but welcome back. Well, it's nice to be back with you. Yeah, Great. yeah. And, uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's actually how we've become acquainted. You kind of asked me to be a consultant. I feel quite humbled uh, on, on a book you're writing. And it's been a, a, a wonderful gift to me just to grow in knowledge and interest, and I hope I've been of some benefit to you. Oh, well, you were uh, you're, you're great. Uh, you uh, helped me a lot with the, uh, uh, the part of the book is, uh, the first part of the book, as you know, is yeah. uh, all forensic medical, and then the last part, the, the Gospel Bible, of John, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I was so appreciative that you spent some time Well, you helped me to see things in John that I never saw before, and hopefully help, <laughs> you, see you, so help you see some things, too. But but let's go back. How uh, This has been a fascinating, intense interest of yours. For, As I said, you've published uh, two books and in the process of publishing a third. Uh, and you've done a lot of real medical and scientific research on this, not just, uh, you know, uh, philosophical musing. So how did you discover the Shroud and, 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 and get interested in it? Well, I was, uh, uh, actually, I was 19 years old before I ever heard of the Shroud. Never had heard about it before. I was in college. I was at Boston College. I was in pre-med. And I went down into Boston and came across uh, a, a book in an old bookstore. Uh, and it was, the name of the book was A Doctor at Calvary by, by Dr. Pierre Barbet. And I only picked it up because I thought it would be some kind of a discussion about the crucifixion of Jesus. I got back to the the dorm and I started reading about it and for the first time in my life I found out about this Shroud of Turin mm. which I had never heard about before and I found it very you know fascinating I thought the, the doctor did a beautiful job of looking at it from a forensic perspective. But what is it? Tell us what the Shroud uh, well, is. The, the Shroud being <clears throat> uh, it is a cloth around 14 feet long uh, about three and a half feet wide uh, it's made of linen which is flax and uh, it um, has on the it has the front and back of a man's body, who was crucified in the very same manner that we discover Jesus was crucified mm. in, the, in the Gospel of John or the other Gospels. So <clears throat> it's uh, uh, that's what's fascinated people about it for so long, and people right from the first uh, we've talked about it being. The, uh, how can they tell just from uh, that it's you know we're we're, we're uh, a crucified body was wrapped in that cloth. Well, you what you're what you're mm -hmm. looking at is you're looking at the blood marks, and, yeah. the, and the blood marks are consistent with, for example, a crown of thorns, a spear wound at the side. All these are blood marks. All the things the that shroud. are mentioned in yeah, the Bible. Yeah, the the wound at the wrist, <clears throat> the uh, the wound at the feet, and then the scourging of the of the of the body. Yeah. So it has all of these particulars on the on there, uh, which reminds you very. Very yeah. much so. I mean, it would have been also relatively typical of most crucifixions, wouldn't it? Well, there's a, there's a few things that there, it, it, I'm sure there were many, many people that had been scourged and crucified. Yeah. What would be unique about this is uh, the, the fact that he had a crown of thorns. Right. 
Uh, and another thing that's unique, I mean, the fact that he was uh, a sp the spear in the side. After, because that was, yeah. according to the Bible, after he died. Right. And they usually... And blood and out. water came forth. Right. So the interesting part of all of that, uh, and I've only, just only over the years that I really realized that the, 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 the great details that you see in the Shroud are actually the details that John writes about in his Gospel. Mm. So that's really fascinating, and that really... Uh, but what, what, what I really... Uh, when I first started, I really basically started as a skeptic. Yeah. Because I was, uh, you know, want to know the answers. Why? What, was this real? Was this really blood? Was this, uh, how did this image, see, the other thing about this whole thing is you have this wonderful image, the front and back of a man. Uh, and actually the interest uh, in the shroud really, let's, 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 let's go back a little bit in history. The shroud sort of showed up. Uh, around 1350 in Leary, France. Mm. Uh, prior to that, uh, there wasn't a lot known about it. Uh, but then it, it, then it, it moved from Leary, France to Chamonix to then to Turin, Italy. And that's why it's called the Shroud of right, Turin because right. it's been in <coughs> there since the 14, 15, <coughs> And who kind of had possession of it? The, the House of Savoy had possession of it, not the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church only had possession of it starting in the 80s, ah. 1980s. Ah. And uh, so it went from, uh, so it was kept by that family, and they were very careful in keeping it and being sure that it wasn't torn apart or people, you know. Right. Uh, you can tell there's probably little pieces of it that have been missing, maybe cut off and so forth, given out to right, people right. in the past, but for the most part it's intact. But there, in 1532, as a major fire took place in Chamonix. Now, the, 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 the shroud was in a, uh, a silver box, and it was in a niche in the wall of the, uh, 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 behind the, the, the chapel, the, the, uh, the altar. Yeah. I actually was there and saw that, uh, and I took pictures and so forth of it. And uh, so that fire, uh, the men, three men, I believe, ran in there, and, uh, and they... Uh, had to crowbar it open, you know, get it, it was behind a grate, and I don't know how they lived through it, but anyway, it was so hot in there that the, uh, the silver melted uh, in, on part of the box and dripped through uh, the folded cloth. And wow. so what happens when you open it up, you see these two parallel strips of burn marks yes. on each side of the body. that came from this fire. I'm sorry? That came from this fire. That came from that yeah. fire. Yeah, we'll be showing. I, I hope the pictures yeah, of these gonna, things. And yeah, we'll. That's, so hopefully yeah, people we can, can be looking it. at this even while we're talking. Yeah, right. They're going <clears> to <throat> be. So and uh, you you don't see the arms as you can see, and uh, it it turns out that um, uh, that was a vis <clears throat> We we went, sort of went from there to that knowledge of that, uh, looking at the shroud and studying it. As I said, I started as a skeptic, and. Uh, I started looking at the blood marks. I didn't know how the image got on there, but I was very interested in the blood marks being a physician. And one day I, I was studied a particular image. It's a blood mark off the, off, the, off the elbow. In other words, it's not on the body itself. Yeah. And I began to study that, and I, studied, I looked at it for about three years trying to figure out how that blood mark got off of the image. No one knew. I asked all the experts at the time. No one knew how that happened. And then one day, uh, I, had a, I was fortunate, I had a full uh, replica of the entire shroud uh, from a friend of mine who, who bought it, and he let me borrow it. And one day, I decided to put that cloth over myself. And when, as I did, I realized that I, I discovered something, that the cloth actually wrapped around the side of, of his arm. So mm. in other words, uh, the blood uh, is kind of difficult with, I, I, if we had the pictures here, I would show yeah. you. But, uh, but what happens is that the long and short of it is that it, it helps us understand that he died in a crucified position. Ah. Uh, that was a, and that the blood marks are simply a, uh, a, a, a contact process. In other words, cloth coming in contact with moist blood that was blood there. That's there. Yeah. And the but the image is not a contact process because we know that that cloth actually touched the back of the upper arm. Yeah. But it there's no there's no uh, you don't see the back of the upper arm. 
and that looks like it's off image, you know, as you open it up. So cloth goes around, and then as you open it up, that blood mark is, goes off the body because there's no, no image. So we know the, the blood is a contact process, but the image is not a contact process. Ah. And uh, so that, that's a very important information. Yeah, yeah. We don't know how the image got on there. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, hypotheses with regard to how this happened but no one has been able to reproduce that. That's right. And it, it's an image of the whole body. Yes, yeah, the uh, back and front and of the whole like body. And it's like as if a light went into the cloth, right? Or we, we don't even know, it wouldn't even say that. We don't, well, what it is is, uh, to, to sort of put us in, in perspective, is that what, what this shows, we look at the blood marks first, and we can tell that a man was crucified. Yeah. It had blood marks uh, consistent with a man who's in a crucified right. position, the vertical position. And those are stains in the cloth itself. Right, and then th those blood marks, his last, the last blood flows of his body yeah. uh, uh, were still moist, okay? Yeah. And, they, and they actually, you know, shows the dripping of the blood and the, those, those drips clotted. They were still moist. And then he was taken down from that position and laid on one end of the cloth and then the other end was laid over his body. Ah. So you can tell that the, you, so therefore all the blood marks are consistent with his being laid out. Uh, and then you have this remarkable image and no one knows how that's occurred. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of theory, <clears throat> including light, radiation, all, all kinds of Isn't things. Isn't it also a negative image? That's right. That the, it, it, you're, 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 Getting me in the I'm right direction. Ahead. Am I getting ahead of you? Sorry. <laughs> no, in, in 18, so that's all they had until 1898. Yeah. And in 1898, the first uh, photograph of the shroud was done. Ah. And uh, it was done by Secunda Pia. He was a, a, an amateur uh, photographer, a, a lawyer. I won't hold that against him, yeah. that he was a lawyer. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, was it, he did a, uh, he, he took his, in those days, we had these big glass plates. Yeah, yeah, I remember the old, and you see so, old camera And so when he films. took his big glass plate and he went in and, and uh, he was uh, looking at the, the negative plate and he was absolutely amazed because on the negative plate, he could see the, uh, the image of a man coming right out. Yeah. In other words, and he couldn't understand how could this image be there that I could really see the features of this man. And then he realized what it was, was that the original was a negative. Yeah. So and his image a negative, was a positive. It's a negative of a negative. Right. So, so his was a, a positive. Yeah. Interesting. And the interesting part of that is that the blood is positive on the original cloth, but on the negative, it's negative. Negative, right. But yet the image so is it's positive. it's like two different dimensions. The yeah, two it's just images. really amazing. Yeah. So that's what, that, that information uh, brought the whole world to become that's interested. Right. The scientific world became interested in it. And so since that time, people have been studying it's it. It's been scrupulously studied down to everything from the grains of the cloth to pollen on the cloth oh, to, to uh, figuring, like you said, the, 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 uh, the DNA of the blood stains, all kinds of stuff. There's no, they, there's no official DNA oh, there done, but there's unofficial, unofficial DNA. DNA but right. It just shows that at yeah. best, I guess, that he's a male, but you can see that he's a male without that. I mean, two two questions. One is so simple. Did uh, as you studied it, it, did did you become convinced it was authentic? Well, did you put yourself in the category? I believe it was the shroud of. Well, I, I, I first of all, I think it, it's a stepwise thing. Yeah. Uh, when I talked to you about the blood off the, el the left elbow, and I realized it was definitely that of a man in a crucified position. That was a major step for me. Yeah. Then I realized it was truly a man under this cloth. Uh, and uh, so that really perked my interest. And I kept looking for other things and studying the blood, different blood yeah, marks yeah, and so yeah. forth. And, uh, and the, more, the more I did, the more I realized that there was something so different about this image and blood marks. The blood marks were consistent with the man draped uh, by by the cloth, but the image was really not consistent with that at all. Yeah, it was of a man literally not lying in burial, but actually upright. Well, that's the thing in your latest work, and that's where I've been um, 
part of, uh, and, and again, uh, with a great um, spirit of gratitude for just even being kind of in, entering into the window of this work that you've been working on. Um, of course, the Christian faith doesn't just believe that Jesus was crucified on the cross, and we have the narrative of it. We also believe he was raised up from the dead. And, and uh, it's one thing to say, we got a burial cloth of this dead guy, and well, that's interesting. <clears throat> but the Christian faith is not built on his death. <laughs> right. You know, it's built on the resurrection. As St. Paul says, if Jesus isn't risen from the dead, the whole Christian faith is a lie. So you, your work in particular, I, I don't know if you're the first one, has been looking at the image. Uh, like you said, because of the difference between the image and the bloodstains, they're two different realities, in a way, blended together. Yeah. You, yes. So talk a little more about what, as you kind of explored this, where well, it took you. The interesting part is that uh, one, once I started to look at the image, uh, it was sort of, again, that was an accidental thing. I actually was working with, I was doing, studying the blood on the face and, or the hair. I was trying to decipher yeah. where the blood was. Was it on the face or the hair? And that's another long story we can't really get into. But uh, in doing so, um, what happened was this. I took a picture of, the, of the, my uh, volunteer, and, uh, and he was sitting at the dining room table, and I took his picture, and I said, well, no, I've got to have you lying down here because the man of the shroud is lying down, and uh, I'm going to, uh, and he was bearded and so forth. And so I took his picture, and I was, uh, and then I was very excited to get the photographs back because I I was thinking that the, my negative would look like the negative of the shroud, uh, and so when I looked at the negative of my my volunteer who was lying down, it didn't look at all like the shroud. And so I, you know, the skepticism in me came. I said, well, this is some kind of a fake. People are telling me this is a negative and it's not a negative. And I was very upset. Yeah. And uh, because uh, the image itself uh, of, the sh of the man of the shroud has light areas, the original shroud, right. light areas around the eyes, under the nose, between the lips, and so forth, and light areas under the pectoral muscles and so forth. And uh, this, this, uh, this gentleman had Didn't. none. It was just like a bland no no light areas at all but as i as i started looking through the rest of my photographs and the negatives i came across another negative of the of my volunteer and he had it was uh, the light areas around the eyes under the nose and at the lips and i realized that that's not the picture i took of him lying down but it was the picture i took of him while he was at the dining room table yeah. with sort of light coming from above and there there it was i mean yeah. what what and uh, that, was a, that was an awesome moment in yeah, my life yeah. because uh, before that, I said, that I don't think there's anything on this cloth that can ever convince me that the man of the shroud, uh, that, that, he's, that he's resurrected. Yeah. But once I saw that, I realized that the man of the shroud is not lying down, but he's consistent with the shadows on his face, were consistent, what looked like shadows, I should say, were consistent with an upright man. Upright man. I was so moved by that. I was, there was a picture on the mantle, and I, I just ended up walking out of the room, backing out of the room in awe of, <laughs> see, uh, of seeing this. Because I realized at that moment, that means that he's upright. Yeah. He's not lying down. And then I came to, I did other studies, and, uh, which went on, and I said, was there anything consistent with an upright man? And then I realized that the hair falls down to his shoulders and down his back, yeah. uh, consistent with an upright person. And then later on, I went on to do other anatomical studies that were even uh, more powerful, telling yeah. us that this is that of an upright man. But he's not standing. And that was my problem. Yeah, that was another thing you And discovered. so I said, he's not standing. I said, why isn't he standing if he's upright? Why isn't he standing? And uh, so I didn't know where to go for answers. And I said, well, I'm... I had only one place. I decided to start reading the Bible. Uh, and I went to, chat, to Mark and Luke. And, uh, and anyway, I couldn't find anything. Yeah. Finally got to John in chapter 12, verse 32. Jesus is saying, And I, when I am lifted up above the earth, yeah. will draw people to myself. 
And there it was. Yeah. An absolute definition of yeah. what I was looking at on the shroud. There were some people, it would call it in the tradition, levitation. <laughs> I mean, you're not standing, you're lifted up. Lifted you're actually, up. in some sense, floating. Yeah, just as if, it, if he was up in crucifixion. Yeah. Uh, so lifted up in crucifixion, yeah, yeah. lifted up in yeah, resurrection. Yeah, the metaphor had many dimensions. In lifted in ascension. Up in ascension back yeah. to the Father. You know, even in the Mass today, I elevate, if I be lifted up, it's not an accident that the priest elevates the host right, you know, at the kind of consummation of the whole Eucharistic liturgy. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. Behold the Lamb of God. Yeah. Behold him. Uh, of course, uh, reading that manuscript was a wonderful adventure, uh, I have to say. It becomes like a detective. So you were saying, this clue led you there, but there's something wrong. So it looked like, oh, this is a dead end. And then you said, well, then, wait a minute. If, and, and, and the pieces of the puzzle fit together. So by the, you know, you had this amazing um, conclusion. Like you just said, we have a man who's not standing up. First of all, he's got someone who's up, not down. Right. And number two, he's not standing up. He's lifted up. He's, like you said, the soles of the feet are not, the image is not of a man right. with foot pressure on the foot. Right. He's like elevated. Right. The five feet lifted up. Yeah. So it's, uh, it brought me then to study the Gospels. And yeah. this, is a, this has been a road, a 40-year road. Yeah. I mean... It is stepwise. It was from going from skepticism to finding that butt off the left elbow, yeah, yeah. To what it was, what it meant, and then one thing and another and another and another. Yeah, yeah. So it was sort of a long, uh, long road in a long detective story. Very exciting. Yeah. Uh, very. Uh, as, just as the we've most talked, exciting adventure yeah, in my life. And, and as we've talked, I know a number of times, and we're not the only ones who've said this, but. You know, um, what, what's the meaning of this from a spiritual point of view? Uh, could this be, because another word that John uses, signs. There are signs. This is like a sign, um, a miraculous sign to the 21st century, 20th and 21st century, because we couldn't analyze all these things before. It's, it's, it's like to a scientifically skeptical age, it's like a sign of the truth of the Christian faith. Wouldn't you? That's how I think of it. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, what can God... It points to the truth. Yeah. It points to yeah, really... you still have to believe a it. A reality yeah. that's there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, of course, we can't, you know, you've really got to read the book to understand what, all the details. And yeah, right. And... What it, the fun of the book is that you do you do learn what's happening. You can see for yourself. It's not. I mean, there's a lot of data and information that you can't see. But most of what I try to stay yeah. with is what people can visualize and see and understand for themselves. I know you haven't published a book. But what's the title going to be? Uh, God is at work. Uh, that's the main title, uh, and the subtitle is uh, the Shroud of. Jesus and the Gospel of John. Yeah, Gilbert Lavoy. We trust Son. One of these days, he'll be out there on Amazon. You can order it. Uh, <laughs> but we're still looking for a publisher. But uh, you are, and so um, you know, it really is a, like I said, a sign to a skeptical scientific age, um, a, a piece of evidence. Uh, one of the wonderful things about, again, uh, you know, I'm a new Catholic, but the, the Catholic Church is always made it clear there's no conflict between science and faith. And there's a unity in truth. Scientific right. truth and biblical truth and spiritual truth and moral truth and natural law and all those things. There's a unity. It's not different right. epistemological universes that have nothing to do with each other. Right. Um, and, 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 and again, this book, I think, in a wonderful way, your own work as a scientist, is, uh, as much as you are a man of faith, um, brings the, the faith and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, the science together into a unified truth. What the what the good thing was is that I I really didn't need I uh, I didn't need the shroud for my faith. I had faith. Yeah. But so I was very skeptical about the shroud because I was interested only in the truth. I had no real agenda here. Yeah. Right. And the, uh, I used to say, 
I'll pay a man $2,000, show me this is a fake, and I'm done. I, I don't want to spend my time with this. Right. It never happened. And I really seeked out people that said it was a fake. Yeah, yeah and there are people o who are Over the years. And then I would look and go, and I'd travel to, to, to meet some of these people. And I, but there's no question uh, that, you know, it, it, that it just kept leading on. It didn't happen right away. We're talking about, I mean, for years I would make presentations People would ask me what I think, and I say, I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> but now I, now I'm, I'm past that. Oh, really? Be How interesting. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I'm past that where yeah. I really do believe, uh, it, it is, uh, God is communicating to us through this cloth. Okay. Well, you know, particularly for us as uh, Catholic Christians, is a profound uh, sense of the sacramental nature of, of God. That it isn't God is not just amorphous sort of spirit but is incarnational, obviously Christ himself, God becoming flesh. But also for us, the Eucharist, the, 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 the sacramental presence of God in the bread and wine, uh, uh, all the, it's the sacramental nature, we, the physicality of, of God we, we touching are, us. We are physical people. <clears throat> yeah. God treats us as physical people. That's right, he people. touches us physically. Right. And, he, and he, he wants <clears throat> to communicate to us in a physical manner, right. because we have eyes, and, and I tell, I, I gave a lot of talks to prisoners, and I tell my prisoners, all you need are your eyes and your mind, and look at these photographs to understand what it is. God is truly communicating You give him talks about the Shroud in prisons? Yes. Wow, yes. <laughs> that's an evangelistic uh, <laughs> project. Uh. Well, that was wonderful, because I would have uh, a yeah. 100 to 200 prisoners that never, you know, probably t yeah. a third would have ever heard even a, a word shroud. about the Shroud. Yeah. And at the, you know, when I start off, the people in the back would be, they just came down there really to talk, right, right, right. not to go to a religious affair but right, uh, right. they get an so, excuse to get so every time i walk in there i'd be sort of cold <clears throat> knuckled i didn't know what was going to happen <laughs> but uh, they were you know and as we went along uh, i had a video that i did and uh, and i'd show that and then i would talk and uh and the and the sound of the people yeah, would yeah. lessen and lessen and everybody was listening because they could see for themselves what it, what we were talking yeah, about yeah right. they could make their own yeah, decision yeah, yeah that's the beauty yeah of it. yeah yeah, well, you know, there's a, there are those. Uh, Jesus says that at the end of that John's Gospel. He's talking about doubting Thomas, you know. Blessed are those. Who, he was not hesitating. He didn't rebuke Thomas. He said, come touch me, put your fingers. Uh, even though he doubted, he didn't believe the other disciples. But he also said, uh, uh, blessed are those who, uh, d you know, uh, don't see and believe. Uh, but uh, there's sort of a blessing either way, a blessing to see and believe and those who don't believe. Thank you so much. Well, it's been Continue blessings on this project. I, I forgot to mention, I, 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 I hope you show, we're going to end the show with a picture of, you also um, um, uh, arranged for the producing of a sculpture of what the risen Christ would look like according to the shrine. And uh, I'm, I'm look, we're going to uh, end the program with a picture of that sculpture and because right, we, we're out of time unfortunately i meant to explore that little dimension of your project can't too. do it all you know all right <laughs> thank you so much both for your life story all your work and this particular wonderful work you've done uh, may god bless you and use you and your life to glorify him well thank you for the opportunity to be here <laughs> with right. you thank you for having joined us uh, i hope this will not just be the last time you hear about the child but you might explore their you just Google Shroud, you can get into the conversation and this extraordinary relic uh, that is uh, uh, being scientifically studied and is a fascinating uh, uh, piece of uh, what I think is scientific evidence that the Christian faith is true, that Christ truly is risen. Uh, and God bless.